happens when you add Robert Newton, Linda Darnell, Keith Andes, and Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies, Irene Ryan herself, what do you get? You get 1952's swashbuckling epic, Blackbeard. There's that name, guys, Robert Newton. Now, of course, if you watched the first video, or you know anything about movie history, you know Robert Newton played Long John Silver in Treasure Island. But way in 1952, he also played the most famous pirate in the world, Edward Teach. Better known to you and me as Blackbeard the Pirate. Now, 1952, the movie Blackbeard in 1952, of course, Robert Newton at that time was the go-to pirate. I mean, he had the, as I said before, he was the stereotypical pirate. Uh, he had the talk, he had the walk, uh, the slang that they believe might have been used during that time on a ship. But we see 1952's Blackbeard uh, it kind of goes into a little bit of truth. It goes into a little bit of uh, fact and a lot of, uh, uh, well, not a lot, but a little bit of fiction. Uh, there's always one name that has popped up alongside of Blackbeard's, and that is Robert Maynard. Now, some of the stories have Robert Maynard as a privateer, uh, who was actually a pirate before he became involved in politics. And then some stories don't tell him as a pirate at all, and it just has him as a political figure. Uh, one series that was done just had him as a lieutenant in the Royal Navy. But either way, the the story of Blackbeard apparently can't be sto told without the story of Robert Maynard. And Keith Andes was the guy who brought Robert Maynard to life in this movie. And for a movie that was made way back in 1952, I mean, it, it was full of action. It was full of adventure. Uh, of course, it was a stereotypical storyline. But what made this movie kind of unique for me, because I told you guys in the other pirate video I did that Long John Silver was my top three favorite pirate. Well, Blackbeard is my number one favorite pirate of all time. I love the lore. You know, he was kind of one of those guys who got his start like everybody else did. And another one of my favorite pirates that is linked is Henry Morgan. Now, Henry Morgan was a lot different than Blackbeard. Henry Morgan was a Welsh pirate uh, who, history tells the story of Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan was a capitalist. He capitalized on any situation that he was in that involved him getting some kind of shine out of it and, of course, making money out of it. Now, 1952 uh, version of Blackbeard saw Henry Morgan enter the story. Now, in real lore, in real history, the story of Blackbeard is told as uh, not a lot. They'll tell you that there was not a lot known about Blackbeard's life when he was younger. But most everybody who's done a lot of research on Blackbeard, they all agree that he got his start as a privateer. Uh, and they most believe that he got his start selling with Henry Morgan when Henry Morgan was a pirate. Of course, both men were in Queen Anne's War. They were both in Queen Anne's Navy. And uh, yeah, so they once they come out of Queen Anne's Navy, they wanted to remain free men. Uh, now, another thing that I really like about this is that when, when you tell the story of Henry Morgan and you tell the story of Blackbeard and talking about Blackbeard's beginning, you have to talk about what might possibly be 
besides Blackbeard, the most universally known pirate of the time. And it's a pirate that everybody, whether it's a, fan, a fantasy pirate such as Captain Flint, or if it's a real pirate such as Blackbeard or Henry Morgan or Charles Vane, every one of these guys trace back to one singular pirate. And that is Ben Hornigold. Now, history gets it kind of, is kind of fuzzy. Some history has Blackbeard actually committing mutiny against uh, Benjamin Hornigold and becoming the captain of the Queen Anne's Revenge. And, but history also tells us that not only was he the captain of the Queen Anne's Revenge, but that there was several ships in his fleet. He had a whole fleet of ships. So, and, and the best I can tell in the history that I have researched on Blackbeard is that he died off of the coast of North Carolina, sunk with a ship, but it wasn't the Queen Anne's Revenge. In fact, I think they said that the ruins to that was found either in the 70s or the 80s. But anyway, when you talk about you know, Blackbeard, you come into this whole group of characters and each one of these characters has a crazy story behind them. Uh, but Ben Hornigold was the guy who actually created the fort and created what they called the Pirate's Island, which was New Providence. It was a Bohemian island where Ben Hornigold pretty well much set himself up as the king of New Providence. And in the time that Hornigo was on New Providence Island, uh, it became a shipping lane. It became a trade lane for stolen merchandise. When the pirates would take a ship, they would take their cargo. Everything essentially would go to New Providence to be sent either to Spain or to, the, to America or just wherever it needed to go, wherever it was. Where, whoever basically paid the most. And Blackbeard was, uh, his star shined the brightest, but it didn't shine the longest. Because his pirate career only lasted, some people say it was two years, some people say it was three to four years, but compared to the guys of the time, Calico Jack, and Bonnie, Ben Hornigold, William, uh, any of those pirates that were in that time, uh, Henry Morgan, uh, there was another pirate called William Morgan, I was trying to remember his name a minute ago, sorry about that, but Blackbeard became the most ruthless the most deadly and his star in that time frame shined the brightest but not the longest but everything that he did in the time frame that he went from being a privateer in Queen Anne's army to being the captain of the Queen Anne's revenge set the pace for all other pirates I mean the most ruthless but he actually made his appearance ruthless. I mean, he would put cannon fuses inside of his beard and he would light them so they would smoke around his face. Of course, he had the long black beard and wore the traditional pirate gar, but uh, yeah, I mean, Blackbeard was brought to life in the 1952 movie Blackbeard by my favorite pirate actor, I think Robert Newton was the standard, and still to this day is the standard. You know, what Johnny Depp did, like I said with Jack Sparrow, it was a totally different kind of pirate, a totally different story that was being told. But to me, Robert Newton in the old pirate's way of doing things, Robert Newton was the standard. He was the guy that you needed to aspire to be like. But guys, like I said, 1952's Blackbeard, I could go and talk about Blackbeard all day long because I've done a ton of research on Blackbeard. Uh, he was known as Edward Teach. That was his real name. And it's history spells it T-E-A-C-H, but it was actually spelled T-A-C-T-H-E, which is actually Thatch instead of Teach. But 
uh, it, it is what it is. But I wanted to start the series out. I will be talking about other movies that Blackbeard as a character was in. I'm also going to break down Black Sails. Uh, there's another one that had Angus McFadden in it where he played back Blackbeard. It was a, uh, a series that was on television. Sorry about that, guys. But, yeah, I mean, uh, this, this version of Blackbeard was really probably the funnest for me to watch as as a fan of Robert Newton and as a fan of the story of Blackbeard. The guys, like I said, it's got Irene Ryan in it. Of course, everybody remembers Irene Ryan as Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, so, you can find this movie right now. I know for a fact you can find this movie on Tubi. And I think you can find the movie on YouTube. But guys, if you get a chance, go check it out. It's 1952's Blackbeard. And this is another pirate video in the series. And guys, this has been T-Bones Tender Morning.